1 Corinthians 15, we're going to read uh, several verses. You can remain seated. Um, uh, verse 51, we're going to, I'm going to start reading. We're going to read down to verse 58, but please let's read every other verse together starting at verse 52. First, so I'm going to start. Behold, I will shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, uh, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of the death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here is my text. I, I, we're going to read it twice through, okay? Here is my text. I want you to take notice of what this verse is. This is when we're all gone, when it's all done, when we, are, when we have either have died or God has taken us back, okay? Here we go, ready? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as ye, much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let's read it one more time. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Uh, this year has been a very difficult year. Uh, up until earlier this week, we had 18 people that we know die. Now we have 19. Uh, Benjamin, who came to our church uh, on a Sunday night with his dad and mom, uh, the grandson of, of one of the residents here, her, her, he, he uh, graduated to heaven. He, uh, I guess we would say lost, but I would say won because he doesn't have it anymore. His fight with cancer. He's in heaven. He's with Jesus. Amen. It's been a rough year. Um, I don't know about you, but there's been times during this year I've said, is it worth it all? How many people have said that this year? Be honest. Is it, is it really worth it? It, it, man, I gotta. Now, I, don't get me wrong. I love being the pastor of this church. I love serving alongside you. I, I texted, I, I, I sorry, tweeted. Um, I, I'm a tweeter or Twitter or twit, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I tweeted that I, I love working with the faithful people in my church. I love working alongside you. I love co-laboring with you. But sometimes it's just kind of. hard. Amen? I, maybe I'm the only one that feels that way, but I don't think so. Uh, but, but what we have to realize is that no matter what we do, our labor for the Lord, my dear friends, is not in vain. We can't get a projector to work. Oh, there's another thing. We're, church is canceled. Going home. <laughs> Why? Because a projector won't work. Man, we, I remember the days when, when, it was, when, when we started the church and we were just sitting up on, we were up on the hill over here, just, just literally 15 second drive away. <laughs> we moved a long way, say man, 15 second. Yeah, hello, we're here. Um, uh, and, 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 and my wife was teaching the kids in Sunday school. I sat in front, in the front foyer, praying people to come in and nobody came. And I sat for month after month preaching to my family. Family. I had a captive audience. We've come a long way. Our labor's not in vain. I remember several years ago where, when uh, we had a young lady uh, come to our church and she came and she only came because, well, she wanted to get the preacher off her back, but now she's here. She stayed. 
Our labor is not in vain. I remember an older gentleman coming to get his nephew out of church uh, on a Thursday night, coming out of the upper loft over their old building, and, and, and he only came to get his nephew out of church. And I said, sir, he's staying, so if you want him, you're going to have to sit and wait and listen. And he sat and waited and listened. And now become one of my faithful men. We prayed and we, we, we prayed for his brother to come. And unfortunately, it took his mother's home going to do so. I prayed for some more Filipino families to, to, to so my family, my wife had somebody to, to talk to in their own language because, you know, at the house we speak English. Um, and and, and uh, my wife sometimes speaks Taglish, depending on if she's mad at me or not. You would know that, amen? Taglish, for those who don't know, is half Tagalog and half English, and usually when a female starts speaking Taglish, run. But anyways, uh, amen, brother? And uh, we got, we got uh, Freddie, and then, then uh, little did we, we, uh, we, we uh, I prayed for, for those that would help our church and not hurt our church, and then this big, tall Italian giraffe with coiffed hair walks in, and Rob walks in. And I mean that lovingly. If he went to that dinner last night, man, you'd, where's Rob? There he is. <laughs> you would have been like here. <laughs> there, all, there was not, a, even the white folks were short there, amen? Uh, but seriously, he's, hello. But all kidding aside, have you ever felt that what you're doing for the Lord, that your labor was for not, for nothing? Have you ever felt like you're were, you were spinning your wheels Frustrated over not seeing the results of your inviting folks out to church? You know, that's not an unusual thought. I, I probably think that a lot of Christians, in, uh, and, and uh, at least one time or another, or a lot of Christians sometimes all the time, think what they're doing for the Lord is in vain. Maybe you're, you, you do something for the Lord and your, your spouse or your kids are going, Why are you doing that? You're always at church. And they always get that little head bob. That condescending head bob. And you think that if you just, just didn't do it, just, just, just didn't go serve the Lord, or, or, or didn't go Sunday night, or didn't go to the Bible study, or didn't put, put, you know, uh, give, give to the poor, or whatever. Have you ever felt that if you just didn't, maybe things would be a whole pile easier? It might be easier with man, but I'll tell you something, it won't be easy. It's not easier with, easier with God. It's not. Every work for Jesus will be blessed. You know, if you're putting in the off, your money in the offering plate, well, see, look at here's what I'm given. Or you say, well, you know, you come up and go, well, I can sing. Well, good for you. Maybe there's a reason why I didn't have you singing just yet. Or I can do this, or I can do that, or I, 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 I. That's not a work for Jesus, amen? It's all about him, 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 not I, 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 I. Last time I, realized, last time I read the Bible through, which was this year, just finished again. Not to boast, but you ain't God. Last time I checked, Lighthouse Baptist Church was not God. Now it's a house of God. Last time I checked, I wasn't God. Amen? Don't say that too loud, Rob. You're not, when you do the audio or play the piano or or usher, or pray for the service, or whatever you are doing, you're not doing it for Pastor Payne. You're doing it for God Almighty, and we must remember that. Amen? We all get frustrated and blasé. It happens to the best and worst of us. But in my text again, I'm going to read it one more time. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, in the work of the Lord. One more time. In the work of the 
Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It is understood that we are to be steadfast and unmovable and abounding in But it, we cannot be. Christians can be unsteady and unmovable and not abounding and not laboring. It is easy to become weary in well-doing. It is easy. This has been a hard year for us all. Amen? We started off January, loss of Jim and Dom's mom. When, what month did your dad die? August? August. Ruth. Our friend Ruth. 19 people we know have gone. Some of them may have gone downstairs rather than upstairs. You know... It may sound odd, but one of the highlights of my year was the moment your dad graduated to heaven. I, I, I know that sounds odd, but it was just the, the power. You had to have been there. I know my wife was on site, but she wasn't in the room. Were you on site? You know, you were, were you there, but you weren't in the room? Man, if you were in the room, just the, the, you could feel the power of God in the room. Amen, Freddie? Just the angels come walking down, and, 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 and Brother Galliarza Sr., his soul leave his body and strut into heaven. It was just awesome. But it's been a hard year. Our year next year, again, I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be talking a little bit about it next year. This actually was going to be my first sermon of the year, but I, I just the Lord just kind of moved it up, and I believe that we need it today. To be, in a, to be a laborer for Christ implies that a hardship is in your way. You know, when my, my, we have, we have, uh, when my wife went into labor with our four daughters, you know, she wasn't happy about it, amen? Your wife went into labor with your three daughters. They're not unhappy with it. <laughs> How many of you have ever seen a la lady go into like deep labor? <laughs> it is not pleasant. If guys, if you get married or your wife has children, do not hold her hand while she's in labor. Trust me. I, I, I separated my thumb three times in one labor setting. In fact, those, one of these, this, this is one of the wonder, wonderful word pictures that God has placed in the Bible for us. The word labor is, you, uh, labor is used 19 times. 13 times labor is translated into trouble. Five times into weariness. And only, uh, uh, um, sorry, labor 13 times, uh, trouble five times, and weariness only, uh, uh, only once for a total of 19 times. This, it, uh, this uh, it draws a picture of one beating his breast with grief and sorrow. It means to cause, sorry, it means to cause one trouble, make, uh, make work for him. It also means an intense labor united with trouble and toil. You know, working for God can be a trouble and to a toil, troublesome and a toil-filled life. You know, I was, we were out uh, after, we had to walk off the Filipino dinner. Oh, dude. I think I gained about 10 pounds last night. And we walked, went around the mall, and I went to this, uh, this the, the, the um, health food store. And she said, do you have a, do you have a stress-filled life? And I said, I'm a pastor of a church. The answer to that question is Yes. You say, oh, you're not supposed to be stressed out. Too blessed to be stressed. Okay, change your lives. Say hello, come on. <laughs> okay. See, when Jesus came, you have to understand something. He labored. And he is our example. His hum humanity got tired just like ours. 
You know, the, 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 he, he got tired. Uh, John 5, 17 says, But Jesus answered them, said, my father, uh, uh, my father worketh hitherto, and I work. God tells us that we're to be like him, so he works, so we must what? Work like him. And maybe even unto death. John 9, 4 says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh where no man can work. You know, when you're, when you're, uh, you know, you're able-bodied, you can go soul winning, but when you're in a wheelchair in a nursing home, guess what? The days of you going door knocking, the days of you being physically able to do something, the days of you uh, being able to put money in the offering plate, the days of you uh, standing up and singing, or the days maybe you're blind, your sight is getting, sight is getting uh, 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 dimmer, and the days of you being able to do computer work or in the audio booth, they may be over, but right now you need to work like there's no tomorrow. Because there's people that don't. We may not have tomorrow. We could drive home and get hit by a transport truck. <laughs> drive with Freddie and have a heart attack. Amen? By the way, if you want to get a good prayer life, drive with Freddie. Now he's a good driver. If you want to be bored to death on the road, on the highway, drive with Rob, amen. He's one of the ones where you're like, come on, get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way. Amen. <laughs> Love you, Rob. Uh, John 4, uh, 7, 17, 14 says, I have glorified thee on the earth, and I have finished the work which thou hast gavest me to do. You know the verse in the Bible, I, I forget the address, it says, I have fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I have kept the faith. Is that about you or do you get, oh, it's so hard. It's so hard, Rob. I can't go on. I quit. No. What you do is you quit relying on yourself and just start relying on God and he'll get you through. Amen. How many times have you, you know, Thursday, uh, Wednesday night, man, my chest, it felt like somebody just, it felt like, honestly, Rob, you were jumping on my chest. I'm just like, just stomped on my chest. It really did. I, or, you know, somebody, like, you're muscular. You're, so it felt like you were stomping on my chest. I hurt. Man, Thursday, I hurt. Man, I come, I preached on Thursday night at Freddie's house. I felt like a couple times collapsing. It was so, I, but you know what? God got me through. Friday, I was okay. Yesterday, I'm okay. Today, I'm okay. But my dear friends, the cream of the crop, the, 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 the ones that God can count on are the ones even when the time is rough and tough and it feels like the whole world is going to cave down on you. But you just say, I got to do something for God. Man, there, there, there's, you know, I got to do something for God. You call up the preacher. Hey, preacher, you know what? I got some time on the, my hands. What can I do to help you? What can we, what, hey, uh, preacher, I, I, man, I, 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 is there something I can do to, to help the church so we could, we could reach the, 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 our, our city or country for the Lord? Paul reminds those that who are in labor for Jesus that their toils and troubles are not in vain. And your labor and toil for the Savior will not be in vain either. I'm sure there are times that many of us believe otherwise. Really, is it worth it? You know, you got, what, 20-minute drive? Is it worth it? Snowing out, is it worth it? You're in a car that's like, you know, weighs five pounds more than a mini. Is it worth it when it's blowing snow? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, uh, I just, uh, I, I can't go on. It's, it's, it, I'm tired. You know, I saw Freddie this morning, and man, I looked like he needed to, have like coffee. 
Like a, an ex, I almost texted you, can you pick up a couple of espressos and, and an intravenous tube? Like he was like, got home at what time this morning? Got to bed at what, 3.30 you said, 4 o'clock, something like that? Man, he's here. He looked like death warmed over this morning. He's, are you awake a little bit more now? Okay, good, amen. He told me last night, you're, you're, you're preaching better be exciting to keep me awake, preacher. Is it exciting enough for you? All right, cool. Because next, I'm going to take off my shoes and jump on the pulpit, okay? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. My wife's going, don't hurt yourself. But do you ever wonder why? Do you ever wonder if? See, number one, I, I think, one, I wonder if Jesus thought it was all in vain. He came down to save a bunch of people who, don't, who, who wanted to kill him. Is it worth it all? Matthew uh, Matthew 13, verse 53 to 58, it says, And it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence, and when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their own synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence, uh, this, or whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Not, is not the his mother? Uh, called Mary, is not his brethren James, Joseph, and Simon, and Judas, and his sisters, uh, are, are, are they all not with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. He was preaching the gospel, he was preaching the Bible, and they were offended by it. But Jesus said unto them, I am a prophet, I'm sorry, a prophet is not, not without honor, save in his own country and his own house. And he did not many mighty works because of their unbelief. And they, they didn't like him. They, and he just preached the Bible and they didn't like him. Jesus, the very Son of God, the Christ, the Messiah, was de despised and rejected by even the people from his own country. No statement can ever be truer to sometimes of us. You know, you do something for the Lord and your family who are not living for the Lord, they're going, why did you do that? Hey Amen. Has that ever happened to you? You put, oh, okay. You know what, guys? I, I'm going to say this, and if you don't like it, tough. You put money in the plate. We've all had people ask us, why do you tithe? Not my, my family has it because they tithe with us, but I'm talking my, you know, my, my mother and my sisters. Why do you give so much to the church? Because it's a command of God. Duh! You do that to them because it's a command of God and go, duh! And they usually shut up. Amen? Or, why are you in church three times a week? Amen? Why are you always there? I want to go shopping on Sunday. See ya. Let's go on vacation. Well, let's make sure we have a good church near us. Oh, you don't have to. You're on vacation. By the way, there's no vacation from God. Amen? Just as you expect me when I'm on vacation to go to a church in midweek Bible study, uh, God expects you to do the same. Hello? Amen? I, number two, I wonder if Jeremiah thought that his labor was in vain. Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 1 to 13, tells us one of the greatest tragedies in his ministries. Later on that passage, it, he says, My Lord, the King, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon. Hmm. And he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is. Jeremiah served the Lord and he was cast in the prison and, and, and he was going to die 
of hunger. How many people are hungry right now? You, man, my stomach's starting to go, ooh. Man, I'm hungry, but I'm not going to die of hunger. Man, he was, by the way, if you fasted more than a few days, you know, sometimes you're, you're, you, get, you get lighthearted and, or lightheaded. But my dear friends, Jeremiah kept going. Jeremiah, by, by the way, uh, I, I like the verse in the Bible where it says, faithful unto death. If somebody walked in here and, 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 and uh, cocked a gun and held it to your head and said, renounce Jesus or I'm going to put a bullet in your head, what would you do? I think, I, there, I don't know if anybody in here, but I think some Christians would probably say, okay, okay, if I just renounce God now, spare my life, then I can change my mind afterwards. Hello, uh, uh, that's kind of double-minded. And the Bible says a double-minded man is what in all his ways? I think it says unstable. My dear friends, even if it costs us everything, we must still serve the Lord. Why? Because God will provide. Amen? Does it, hey, I left my, my full-time job, went to a part-time job, left my part-time job, and does it look like I missed too many meals? God takes care of me. And if he'll take care of me, he'll take care of you. Amen? He's taking care of every one of our... I remember several, I think three years ago, we were coming in December, we were so far, we were in the hole, brother. We were, church, church financially was in the hole. I said, man, we got to cut spending. We got to cut this, cut that, cut this. And then we got some unexpected bills. I'm like, oh, Lord, why? You know I'm going to cut. I did. I, I, had a, I had a talk with him. I was, we were over at the other building, and I, and I sat up in the upper room, in the upper loft. I, uh, that was my prayer room. And, and I sat up there. I said, Lord, you know what's going on here. And I felt like the, the spirit of the Lord just saying, trust me. D do you trust me? And I said, well, yeah. And I didn't audibly hear it, but I felt a small, still voice in my heart. You, you had one of those. I said, Lord, I trust you. Yeah, you know I do. Well, then just shut up and trust me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yes, sir. And, uh, I, and, and we came out okay. Lord provides. Amen? Oh, okay. Only one person said amen. The Lord provides. Amen. Thank you. I wonder if Joseph thought his labor was in vain. Time and time again, we see Joseph in the prison house. His brothers sold him. They were jealous of him. Joseph kept on going. I see. I hear somebody's stomachs growling. <laughs> Amen. Genesis chapter thirty-nine, verse twenty says, "And Joseph's master took him and put him into prison." Same in verse chapter forty. He was in prison. See, time and time again, also we see that that Joseph was with the Lord in the prison house. Genesis 39, verse 2 and verse 3, it says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and the Lord was, saw, and, the, and his master saw him, uh, saw that the Lord was with him. In verse, chapter 30, verse 22, or 21 and verse 23, again, the same thing. The Lord was with him. You know, if you are working for the Lord, doesn't matter where you are, the Lord is with you. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in prison. I've done ministerial work in prison, and I'll tell you something. You want the Lord with you in prison. I actually sat in, at um, Napanee Detention Center. I sat when one side was a murderer, the other side was a rapist, and I'm sitting in the middle of them. You want the Lord there with you, amen? By the way, those, both of those men got saved. 
You say, oh, they got saved? Yeah, they got saved. It was worth it. You ever seen somebody get saved? It's worth it, isn't it? It's worth it, isn't it? You ever see somebody get right with God? Hey, hey, it's worth it. You know, it was all worth it when Sarah got right with God and, came and, and, and started giving her life back to the Lord. I still remember, I could probably, if we were in the other building, I could take you to exactly where it was. Hey, it's wor uh, Freddie, was it worth it to see your three daughters get baptized on the same day? Amen. I think it was. See, also, I, number four, I wondered if John the Baptist thought it was all, thought it was all in vain. What happened to John the Baptist? He got his head cut off. Why? Because some woman didn't like what he was saying. <laughs> how, many, how many people have ever had a woman not like what they were, you were saying for the Lord? <laughs> you're in good company, amen? Just, just be thankful that your, your, your head's still on, amen? I wonder if Stephen thought his labor was in vain. After a biting message, the people sought to stone him in Acts chapter 7, verses 54 to 60. This is the most moving story, and I want to read this. I want to read these texts. I know we're running late in time, but uh, I, who cares? Amen? It says, when they heard these things in Acts chapter 7, verse 50. 4 to 60. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at, the young man, at, a, young, at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they, st they stoned Stephen and called upon God saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin on their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now that's not what you're doing now. It means he died. He died a painful, stoning death. Remember those, uh, did you ever play ball hockey uh, growing up? Remember those orange hockey balls in the wintertime when they froze and you got it in the thigh? It hurt. See, in the summertime, we froze those hockey balls. We were stupid. <laughs> they hurt. Could you imagine getting stoned? You know, one, it's like, oh, you man, you, you walk for a limp for a week, you know. It's like, oh. Can you imagine getting stoned to death? For what? Proclaiming. God's word. Why? Because they were convicted. See, nowadays we don't get stoned, we get talked about. The most, one of the most precious meals for most Christians on a Sunday afternoon is roasted preacher. I don't like what he preached. <laughs> well, he preached convicting. No, unless I, if I say that, uh, you know, you have to stand on your head and spit nickels and eat balut to get to heaven, then you can roast me. Amen, Sarah? Sarah says, bless God, you don't have to eat balut to get to heaven. Amen? But my dear friends, Stephen died. And I wonder if his labor, he thought, was in vain. How about Noah? I wonder if Noah thought it was in vain. It took Noah to build 120 years to build the ark. And he didn't have one single convert outside his family. Not one. 
Him hammering along and them going, Ah, Noah, why you fool, you're building a boat and it hasn't even rained. He said, but God said. Actually, his only converts were animals. Amen? The crocodiles, the ducks, the giraffes. Don't know why he got the spiders. I left them. But people just mocked him and, and called him a crazy man for 120 years. But Noah knew his marching orders. He knew God's command for his life, and he did it no matter what the opposition. I think probably he, even his family at that time thought he was crazy. We see Demas. Number seven, those who thought that it was in vain. We see Demas thought his, his labor was in vain in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20. It says, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. In other words, he says, Demas walked away because the love of TV, money. The, he wanted the people around him to like him. You know what? I don't care if the world likes me. I care that God is okay with me. Amen? Hey, see, even, even one time Peter thought his labor was in vain in Matthew 26, 74. It says, and he began to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man. He, he, he didn't say, I don't know Jesus. <coughs> he cursed and swore. This was Peter, one of the men that God walked with God when he was on this earth. Jesus and him, he was one of the, uh, the elect few that Jesus said, Come on with me. You get to walk with me every day. See, when, when Pastor Parton comes up here, I get to spend more time with him than anybody else. And I like that. I get to spend the day with the preacher. Peter spent the, the days with the Savior. And he said at one time it wasn't worth it all. The disciple, all of his disciples at one time thought it was in vain. Matthew 26, verse 8. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation saying, what purpose is this waste? They thought it was wasteful. Hey, can you imagine thinking coming to church is wasteful? I've had somebody say that on a Father's Day Sunday. Well, it's wasteful of me. It was a waste of my time. I'm not a dad. With that attitude, you won't be a dad. Judas. Actually, before I go to Judas, how about Matthew 26, 56? The, then all his disciples forsook him, forsook him and fled. His disciples said, man, all right, we're out of here. Are you going to flee? Judas thought it was in vain in Matthew 26, verse 15. And he said unto them, what will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they convey, uh, covenant with him for 30 pieces of silver. Hey, can I ask you a question? I want you all to look at me here for a second. What's your price for forsaking Jesus? What's your price? Name it, and Satan will give it to you. <coughs> Name it. Pretty young thing walking by, handsome guy walking by, money, fame, fortune. What is it? Well, it's such a long drive to church. You're moving 
another hour north, right? So it'll take you an hour and a half to come to church. Huh. Hour and a half. Huh. Hour and a half. Get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? If he could drive an hour and a half to church, what is it going to take you? What, what's your breaking point? What's your breaking point? You say, I don't have one. I hope not. You know what my breaking point is? Death. Then I don't have to serve anymore. I'm in heaven. I'm with him. That's my, that's my breaking point. Is that your breaking point? You dying? I hope it is. Which leads me to my, my last point. Do you wonder your, if your labor is in vain? You ever wonder that? Our text gives us a key for keep going. Listen to me, folks. Cleaning the toilets, doing a cantata, sitting and being two characters that have no lines in our cantata, that's not in vain. It's not in vain if it's for the Lord. Our texts give us three, three beautiful, beautiful ways to stay, that your labor's not in vain, to stay going for the Lord. Number one, it says be steadfast. This means to be settled, not going anywhere. Folks, listen to me. I ain't going anywhere. I'm not, I, I don't plan on looking for a, a, a new job, a new pastorate. You're not saying amen, so <laughs> kind of get me worried. I don't plan on leaving. Amen? I'm here till I die. When I'm, when I'm old and feeble or more than I am now, wheel me up in a wheelchair. Prop me up against the pulpit. Let me preach. Amen? I don't plan on leaving. Be unmovable. The second point, it means to be firmly persistent. To be planted firmly, persistent for the Lord. Keep going, keep going. And so, you know, it's hot in here. What's the, what's the temperature? 30 degrees in here. It's hot in here. I am leaking. I'm not sweating. I am leaking. Sweat is going down the back of my legs and on my knees and on my socks. I could wring out my socks. But guess what? I'm going to be persistent for the Lord. And the third way is we need to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. That means to be overflowing with the Lord's work. In other words, always be ready to give a track. Always be ready to do something for God. We're abounding to do other things, but why? Hey, you know, last night at that Filipino dinner, I saw people having their food plates abounding. You said you, you ran out of food almost? And you had to go buy more, and you almost ran out of that? No, you didn't, you're okay with that? All right, good, good. Whew. Folks, if we can abound for our, to feed our bellies, why don't we abound to feed other people's souls? Hmm, good thought, eh? Are you steadfast? Are you um, persistent? Are you overflowing? If not, perhaps the reason is you really, deep down inside, think it's not worth it. It's not worth it. We're not running 200 people. Well, is it worth it? I think it is. You know, yes, it's been a hard year, but you know what? We gained people. Is it worth it? Dom got saved this year. Is his soul worth it? Your dad, uh, days before he graduated to heaven, got saved. Was it worth it? Rob found a church and we saw, um, was it Matthew? Matthew last night. He's spending time with his grandfather, going to church with the grandfather. Loves our church. He says, and his grandfather's 
dying. He's not doing well. And, but he says he's, he's going to be back. Was it worth it? Rob, are, are, are you worth it? Uh, let me answer that question. Yeah, you are. Sarah, are, are you worth it? Yeah. Dom, I'm sorry, but you're worth it. When is it time to quit when you're dead? Amen? We can be settled in. We can be soldiers for the Lord. But we also can become unsettled and movable and not abounding and not laboring. My former church, I'm going to say this story, with well, this church that I got saved in, I said, hey, how's your, how's your soul winning program? I asked the pastor many years ago. They said, you know what? We don't go soul winning anymore. Our church is full. We have two full morning services. We don't go soul winning anymore. I cried. I said, what about the little bus kid that can get saved? Well, we don't, we don't reach them anymore. I said, why? He said, well, they're bus kids. I said, you don't think God can use them? By the way, I'm a bus kid. How many people here think God has used me? You know, we should stop going soul winning when we're dead. You know, we should stop serving the Lord when we're dead because it's worth it. Let us not become weary in well doing. You know, it's okay to be tired in the work. we should be very careful of not being tired of the work. Jesus got tired in the work, but he never got tired of the work. Again, it's been a hard year. Over half of our year, we've been out of this auditorium. Almost half of this year, we've been out of this auditorium. Beautiful auditorium. Amen? Beautiful. We got to keep going. We got to keep going. When you're tired in the work, go to the book. Get some rest. You know, Brother Chandler called me this week. He said, I want to pray for you. I said, okay. I never say no to him. He's, he's cool. I like when he prays. But you know, when he prayed for me, I, I kind of felt refreshed. I was tired exhausted. My mind, what little I have, don't you dare say amen, was just, if it was, I felt like frazzled. But when he prayed, I felt rejuvenated. I felt like, you know, those, the, you know, those five-hour energy bottle drinks? I felt like have, I felt like I had five of those, man. Are you tired of the work? Or are you tired in the work? I don't know about you, I'm not tired of the work. I am tired in the work, but not of the work. Your labor in the Lord, listen to me, is not in vain. Don't let Satan Steal the joy. It's been a hard year. Tomorrow's a new day. Next year, our theme, we've, we've and, and you know, we haven't put up our theme in a while, banner for in a while. We haven't had it to be able to put it up in a while. But we're not going to put it up the last week of the year either. You know why? 
because our theme next year is pressing on. There is still work to be done. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Folks, listen to me. We must not quit. <laughs>